Chapter 23. I settled back against the tree trunk. I brushed a spider off the knee of my jeans. Down the street, a dog barked. I heard a lawnmower start up. I felt strange, kind of excited and very tense and wired. I guess because I'd never told this story to anyone. I took another deep breath. You see, my dad was president of the city council in our old town. It was like a really big deal. So when I burned down our house, it was a big story. It was on TV and in the newspaper, and people talked about it on the radio. Elliot squinted at me. Did they know it was an accident? It was an accident, right? I nodded. The fire was a total accident, but I'd been in trouble before. You know, at school and stuff. Nothing serious, but a lot of people said I was mad at my dad, and that's why I burned down my house. Elliot shook his head. Wow. So my dad had to quit his job, I continued. It was really bad around our house. I had to go to children's court. Talk about scary. We told the whole story to the judge six times, but she didn't believe me when I said it was an accident. Wow, Elliot repeated. Wow. The judge said I was dangerous. She wanted to send me to some kind of youth prison. I stopped for a moment. This part of the story was hard to tell. But you changed your mind? Elliot asked. What did you do? My dad demanded to deal with her, I replied. The judge said if my family moved out of town, if we moved far away, she would drop all charges and let me go. I sighed. So we moved, and here we are. Elliot blinked a few times. I could see he was thinking hard again. I have one question, he said finally. You accidentally burned down your house because of the one, of one of those light sticks you invented, right? Right, I said. But you just showed me a light stick. Why do your parents let you work on light sticks after the, what happened? I put a finger to my lips. Shh, they don't know about it. I had to sneak my chemistry set into our new house. They don't know I've gone back to working on light sticks. It's a total secret. Whoa, Elliot shook his head. Isn't that looking for trouble? Not if I'm careful, I said. But then I added, I try to be good. You know, I promised I'd be different here in our new home. And I'm really trying, but it's hard. Like my big bike going into the quagmire and that car accident yesterday. Sometimes accidents happen. Elliot nodded. I guess. I climbed to my feet and brushed off the back of my jeans. Hey, I promised my dad I'd walk the dog and then mow the back lawn, I said. I'd better get going, but do you want to hang out after dinner? You know, go to a movie or something? Huh? Elliot's mouth dropped open. He narrowed his eyes at me. Did you forget, Jay? We can't go out at night. We can never go out at night. Chapter 24. Why not? Why is everyone afraid to go out at night? Those are the questions I wanted to ask Elliot, but he hurried away and I didn't get a chance. Of course, he probably wouldn't answer anyway. He'd probably mutter, you know, the way he always did. Well, the whole thing was weird. There were definitely secrets here in my new town. Secrets I didn't know the answers to. But I'm going to find out, I told myself. I'm going to find out what goes on here at night. I turned away from the fat tree trunk where Elliot and I had been sitting. I was still feeling a little tense, but I was glad I told Elliot the story of what happened back home. It felt good to tell it to someone who would understand. I took two steps and then stopped. A lawn gnome stood a few feet away. It had its back turned. I stared at its red coat pulled down over smooth white pants. Its painted black boots, the tall red hat tilted on its head. That lawn gnome wasn't here before. I know I didn't see it. My whole body tensed. My hands balled into fits. It's alive. It turned its back so I wouldn't know it was listening. But it was here listening to my whole story. My fear gave way to anger. I could feel it start to burn in my chest. I pictured the lawn gnomes last night, scampering in the dark. Alive. Alive and vicious. They tried to hurt me. They tried to scare me. I wanted to show them that they couldn't mess with me. I stared hard at the lawn gnome's back, feeling my anger rise. And then I burst forward. Without making a sound, I made a leap at the, at the gnome. I flew at it from behind and tackled it hard around the waist. Chapter 25 Ow! I let out a cry of pain as my shoulder slammed into the back of the lawn gnome. My hands grabbed solid stone. Pain shot down my shoulder as I hit the hard body. The gnome didn't budge. I slid to the ground. I lay in the grass waiting for the waves of pain to fade. Finally, I pulled myself to my feet and walked around to the front of the gnome. Its painted eyes stared blankly straight ahead. Its mouth was frozen open in a sick, red-lipped grin. I tapped its hat. I pinched its stubby, round nose. I poked it in the eyes with two fingers. Stone. Hard stone. Not alive. I must have looked like a nut job attacking, attacking a little statue. I bent down and gazed into its eyes. Paint. Just paint. No one in there. 
No way it could possibly move. No way it could be alive. But I knew they could come to life. I'd just spent the scariest night of my life watching them come to life and come after me. How did it happen? Why? The lawn gnomes were a mystery about this town that I had to solve. Once again, I pictured Elliot's frightened face as he said, We can't go out at night. We can never go out at night. Another mystery. I plan to solve it tonight. Of course, that night, Kayla tried to talk me out of it. She paced back and forth in front of me in my room, swinging her red hair and shaking her head. Jay, are you out of your mind? She demanded. Maybe, I said. I sat on the edge of my bed and watched her storm around. If you go outside, you'll get in trouble, right? Maybe, I said. She stopped walking and stood over me with her arms crossed. Is it worth it? Maybe, I said. But you told Mom and Dad. Kayla, there are too many weird things going on, I said. Something isn't right about our new neighborhood. She poked me in the chest. Yes, something isn't right. It's you. Ha ha, I rolled my eyes. I jumped to my feet and pushed past her, heading toward the bedroom door. I'm not going outside to cause trouble. I'm not going to do anything bad at McClatchy's house. I promise. What are you going to do? Just look around, I told her. See if I can figure out what's up with all the lawn gnomes. See if I can learn why everyone is so terrified of going out at night. She shook her head. You know you shouldn't do this. I grabbed two light sticks and shoved them in my pocket. Then I hurried out of the room and down the stairs so I wouldn't hear any more of her warnings. My sister is a big coward. She follows every rule. I guess some people like to follow rules. I'm not one of them. I pulled open the front door and stepped outside. Was I looking for trouble? Maybe. Chapter 26 I saw a tiny slice of moon in the sky, but it kept disappearing behind wisps of clouds. There, were no, there was no breeze at all. The air was still. The trees in the front yard didn't move. I stepped onto the porch and peered both ways. I expected to find lawn gnomes somewhere beside me. But no, the porch swing stood in pale light from the street lamp. The canvas chairs beside it were empty. No gnomes in sight. I jumped down onto the grass. My parents' bedroom lights still glowed. They were awake. I could see their shadows on the window shade. I had to be quiet. I tiptoed down the middle of the yard. Dad's car was parked in the driveway. In the darkness, it reminded me of a large animal about to pounce. Okay, yes, I was a little freaked. I mean, I don't have nerves of steel. I'm not a total coward like Kayla, but being out here late at night, when I knew it was against the rules, well, it made my imagination go a little wild. I turned away from it and gazed toward the street. There were no lawn gnomes in my front yard. I didn't see any at the curb. I felt a chill at the back of my neck. The air was so still as if everything had frozen in place. I was the only thing moving, the only person out here. No cars moving on the street, no animal sounds or doors slamming on garage doors, rumbling of footsteps or voices or birds chirping or crickets or anything. Freaky, right? I reached the curb and gazed into McClatchy's front yard. His house was pitch black, not a light on anywhere. In the deep silence, my footsteps sounded deafening as I crossed the street and stepped onto McClatchy's driveway. I turned and peered down the long, tall hedge. McClatchy's two lawn gnomes usually stood at the back of the hedge. But no, the hedge rose up like a black wall. I squinted hard and saw only darkness. I took a few cautious steps up McClatchy's driveway. Again, I felt like a chill at the back of my neck. My throat tightened and my legs felt wobbly as I made my way toward the house. Silence. The only sound was my rapid breathing. My eyes darted all around. I felt like a frightened rabbit. Every sense was alert. Where have all the lawn gnomes gone? It isn't really that late. Why isn't anyone else outside? I squinted hard at McClatchy's front porch. I saw a stack of firewood logs piled at one end. A large axe leaned against the porch wall. A pair of tall black boots stood beside the door. Suddenly, I froze. My breath caught in my chest. A sound. I heard a sound. The crunch of leaves, the soft thud of a footstep, then another. Every muscle in my body tightened. I forced myself to turn toward the sound. I still couldn't see them in the darkness, but I could hear them. The lawn gnomes. They were coming for me. Chapter 27. The tiny moon slid out from behind the clouds. Pale light washed over the lawn. The scrape of rapid footsteps grew louder. I held my breath and stared at a family of raccoons making their way across the grass. They kept their heads low. Their dark ringed eyes stared straight ahead. There were five or six of them walking rapidly in a straight line. I couldn't help it. A laugh burst from my throat. I'd been so frightened I was shaking, and all because of a family of raccoon. The lawn gnomes had vanished, disappeared. 
Where had they gone? I didn't care. It was perfectly safe out here. What were people afraid of? Raccoons? An idea popped into my head. I decided to go to Elliot's house. I'll drag Elliot outside with me. I'll show him there's nothing to be afraid of. I trotted down the street and turned away from McClatchy's yard. I remembered the houses look a lot like alike on Elliot's block, but I was pretty sure I remembered his. Third house from the corner. I jogged along the side of the street. I gazed into every yard I passed. No lawn gnomes anywhere. I had seen at least two or three in front of every house, but now they had all vanished. Weird, but so what? It took me only a few minutes to reach Elliot's block. I heard a cat crying through an open window. Another house had the TV turned up really loud. It was a block of small, square homes. I peered down the street. No one outside. Nothing moving. I trotted up to the third house from the corner. I saw Elliot's bike leaning against one wall, and I saw Elliot through the front window. He was sitting at a table with a laptop glowing in front of him. I could see on the screen that he was playing a game. I stepped up to the house and tapped on the window. He didn't hear me. He didn't turn around. I tapped harder on the glass. Then I shouted, Hey, Elliot, it's me. He finally turned around. His eyes bulged with surprise. He came up close to the window and peered out at me for a long time, like he was seeing a ghost or something. I waited for him to come to the front door, and I could see the fear in his eyes. A few seconds later, he pulled the front door open, just a crack. Jay, what are you doing out there? Having fun, I said. Come on out. He peeked out at me through the crack. I could only see one eye. Go home, he whispered. Are you crazy? You shouldn't be out there. Come on, Elliot, I said. I swear, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's not allowed, he insisted. Everyone knows it's not allowed. Everyone is wrong, I said. I pushed the front door open wider and grabbed his arm. Come on out. It's an awesome night. Come on, try it. I don't think so, he said. He pulled back. Maybe some other time, but I have to ask my parents. They... I wrapped my fingers around his wrist and tugged him out onto the front walk. His eyes bulged again, and he gazed all around. See? Perfectly safe, I said. The... This is a big mistake, he stammered. No way, I said. Let's take a walk. It's so totally cool. We're the only ones out here. It's like our own private world. He swallowed hard. I don't like this, he said. His eyes darted from side to side. I pulled him to the street. What's that sound? He cried. It's a cat, I told him. Inside the house on the corner, I started to walk, waving for him to follow me. Come on, dude. A short walk. Calm down, really. We're the only ones out here, see? He held back. But Jay, you know the rules. You know what? I kept walking. I knew he'd follow me. Hey, wait up, he called. He came scrambling after me. Isn't this awesome? I said. We crossed the street and turned onto the next block. Isn't this totally awesome? Our own world. He poked me in the ribs. Hey, I spun around. Why'd you do that? His chin trembled. His eyes were wide again. He pointed. Uh, Jay, I don't think we're alone. Chapter 28. Gazing into the dark, I heard the thunder of footsteps. The lawn gnome seemed to appear from all directions. How many were there? Fifty? A hundred? An army of lawn gnomes? They moved quickly. Their little boots pounded the pavement. Their tall caps bobbed and tilted under the pale moonlight. Their faces were shadowy and grim. Eyes narrowed on Elliot and me. We had no time to move. They surrounded us, forming a tight circle. I gazed from one unfriendly bearded face to the next. They were a foot shorter than Elliot and me, but there was no way we could fight them. They closed in tightly, bumping their hard chests against us, pushing us, pushing until we were squeezed together. They still hadn't spoken or made a sound. They crushed against us, squeezing us in the middle of their tight circle. Malfunction, one of them said, finally, in a squeaky cartoon voice. Malfunction. He was staring at me as he said it. What do you want? I shouted. Go away. We haven't done anything to you. Elliot put a hand on my shoulder. Careful, he whispered. Don't get them angry. Angry, I cried. I'm the one who's angry. Shh, Elliot warned. I told you we're not allowed out here. Go away, I screamed at them. Leave us alone. I placed my hands on the shoulders of the gnome in front of me and tried to push him out of my way. I guess that was a mistake because the gnomes all uttered angry cries at once. It sounded like dogs giving a warning bark. And then the little guy shoved my hands off. He grabbed me by the waist, squeezed me hard in an iron grip, and hoisted me off the ground. Whoa! I let out a startled cry. The gnome was incredibly strong. 
I tried to squirm and spin out of his hands. That only made him squeeze my waist tighter. I tried to hit him. My hands grabbed nothing but air. I couldn't escape. Other gnomes reached for me. They held me high above their heads, and then I saw Elliot lifted off his feet. He didn't put up too much of a struggle. I guess he was too frightened. A few seconds later, the gnomes began to move. Elliot and I were helpless. Bumping along, held high above their pointed held high over their pointed hats. I twisted and screamed and squirmed and thrashed my arms. The army of gnomes bunched together like a herd of cattle, moving in a straight line down the street with Elliot and me on our backs. Prisoners. Let us down, I screamed. I was so frightened my voice came out in a high squeak. They moved quickly, their boots thudding the pavement as they carried us along the dark, empty street. Their stone-hard fingers dug into my sides, into my back. Let us go, I wailed. Where are you taking us? What are you going to do? Chapter 29 Stop! Let us go, I shouted, but they ignored my cries. The clatter of their boots on the pavement drowned out my terrified screams. Elliot and I bumped along together. It was like being carried by a powerful ocean wave, and I saw no one else on the street, no one who could stop them or try to help us. I could scream till my throat exploded and no one would hear. The gnomes turned a corner. Tall trees passed overhead. I glanced over to Elliot. Where are they taking us? Do you have any idea? His face was twisted in fear. Jay, I know exactly where they are taking us, he said in a trembling voice. They are taking us to the quagmire. They are going to throw us in. Huh? A cry escaped my throat. That's the punishment for being out at night, Elliot said. I, I tried to tell you. The punishment, I cried, for being outside? I don't understand. That makes no sense to me. Don't you remember anything? Elliot demanded. Remember? Yes, Jay. Why are you acting so stupid? Everyone knows the lawn gnomes come alive at night. It's only our world during the day. But when it gets dark out, the gnomes take over. It's their world, and and you should stop pretending you don't know all this. I didn't get a chance to reply. The gnomes stopped suddenly. I bounced hard in their hands. They lowered me slowly to the ground and placed me gently on my feet. I gazed around. The moon floated high in the sky, sending down pale, silvery light. The quagmire gleamed in front of us, a shimmering, deadly lake, a lake of thick quicksand where it took only seconds to sink out of sight. I shuddered. I remembered my first time here, and I pictured Elliot and me sinking, sinking, and I thought of my lost bike, somewhere deep below the cold, smelly surface. I took a deep breath and made one last try at escape. I shot my arms out, bent my knees, tried to kick myself free, but the gnomes held tight. I couldn't budge. I turned and sat, saw that Elliot was still held in the air. Four gnomes raised him high over their heads. His eyes were wild with fright. Help me, he cried. They're going to toss me in. The gnomes moved forward toward the lake of quicksand. Wait, I uttered. The gnomes pushed hard around me so I couldn't move. I watched in horror as the other gnomes carried Elliot to the edge of the quagmire. They raised him higher, ready to heave him in. Jay, help me, help me, please, he wailed. I had to do something. This was all my fault. My fault. I had to do something to save my friend. But what? Suddenly, I had an idea.